Kulandireni kuli konse kumene mkutuone na mazulo wano uh, kumalawi kuno kumanso patiko lonse la pansi ndine Brian Band and the program inansu sabataino ya Times Exclusive. Ama tipatila ma program uwa pano pa wairesi ndi Aaron Bopens. How often do you wash your favorite clothes? 52 times a year? How long do you wear them before they fade away? Three? Four years? Imagine a paint with washability capabilities of up to 10,000 scrubs during its life. Imagine a paint that maintains its luster for over seven years. Imagine a paint with a velvet finish and water resistance. Stop imagining, because Rainbow Acrylic Sheen does it all and beyond. An all-time hero for interior and exterior finishing that brings smiles to thousands of families and contractors. Rainbow Paints. Peace of mind. Part of the deal. We're doing a program with Sabataino, the Prophet, a Prophet Patson Gondwe. Amene ndi mkulu wa Good News Ministries Church. Ndikulandire ni inu a prophet gondi. Quite an honor and privilege mazulo ano uh, kukala nano. I'm actually seeing you for the first time. Mongo kukona ni It's a pleasure. Uh, magane mamu. It's a pleasure. We thank God for the grace. Uh, Kumu zindi kuti? So, uh, as you said, zinanga ni Patson Gondwe. Yes. And mozi watu ndi ukaronga. Okay. Yes. So, Mwagula Banji, uh, a, a, a prophet. Yeah, so... Nagwa... And feel free if you want to speak English. In yes. a digital digital language. Because of Nogda Malawa Ambiri at Inve. Yeah, so... Uh, but where you want to speak English, you can feel free to do that. Yeah, so I grew up in the district of Karonga. I was born from a family of nine children. And I'm the last but one. Uh, born from uh, parents that were primary school teachers. From a humble beginning. And then... I did my secondary school education at Bwaira Secondary School in the long way. And by the grace of the Lord, I went to Chancellor College to pursue my college education. Okay. I graduated with a degree in humanities. Okay. And then later on, I joined the civil society. I was working um, in the civil society in Malawi and then did my postgraduate studies at the University of Rhodes in South Africa before the call of the Lord. Yeah. Yes. So when did you realize the call of the Lord? Yeah, so um, uh, as life has it, you know, when God wants to accomplish his purpose in your life, he arranges events that continue to unfold until his purpose is settled. So around 2014, um, I grew ill and someone introduced me to Prophet T.B. Joshua through Emmanuel TV. Okay. By the way, I was born a Catholic. And I raised see. up a Catholic. I see. And I had always aspired to become a Catholic priest when I was growing up. Okay. I always looked up to um, the White Fathers, and our mentor was Father Taylor um, at St. Kizito Parish in Chigone Chigonega in the long way. Mm -hmm. So, but after college in 2014, I grew ill, and someone introduced me to Emmanuel TV of Prophet TB Joshua. And I saw the many wonders and miracles that God was doing through the man of God of blessed memory. And I took a journey of faith to go to Nigeria. And by the grace of the Lord, I was blessed and I was healed. But then um, in my heart, I, I was feeling sorry for the people that are in Malawi but cannot manage to afford an air ticket to Nigeria. And my prayer to God was, Lord, remember our country, remember my people. I've been, I've been able to come this far because perhaps I was privileged some way. But how about the person that is sick and they cannot have an ability to come this far? So that was my prayer to the Lord. And I remember when I went to 
the scorn, we were just having a random uh, walk around the auditorium and someone just came to me and said, you are going to become a very powerful pastor. To me, it didn't make sense because I went there for healing and I was a career person progressing very well in my career. It didn't make sense at that point in time. But then after my healing, when I came back, I just developed this hunger and urge to tell someone that God loves you and that God can change your life. And that began the journey in my ministry. So you were sick and you had to travel to Nigeria. Yes, quite right. God could not have healed you here? No, as I said, when God wants to change your life, yeah. he arranges events that unfold until his purpose is accomplished. For me, I was going there for the purpose of healing, but little did I know that maybe that was a divine encounter to lead me into my calling. There are many men of God in Malawi to whom I could have gone to, yes. but in his ordinance, God led my faith to this man of God in Nigeria. Yeah, but why, why Nigeria? Because I was watching a man on TV, yeah. and I saw the many miracles that were happening through the man of God, Prophet T.B. Joshua, and my faith just leaped towards him. And I said, I can go, and I believe my situation will change. So when you got back from Nigeria, that's when you started uh, Good News Ministry. Yeah, so what happened is when I came back from Nigeria, they gave us anointing water. Usually they'll give you anointing water to help you maintain your faith. It's a tool of faith. So when I came back, um, I started sharing that water with people. People knew that I had gone, so they would come to my home. I would sometimes spray that water on people and people would bring testimonies of healing, testimonies of deliverance, and some of the deliverance would happen right under my watch when I was ministering the, the morning water. But then one day it occurred to my heart to say, God, these people are coming to me, not because they value me, but because they value the water that I have. But between the water and myself, who is more valuable in your sight? Then I wrestled with that kind of meditation to a point that one day I said, let me try using my own hand to pray for someone who is sick other than the water that I brought from Nigeria. And behold, one day I tried to pray for a sick person. She was healed. And that gave me a lot of joy and hope that God can indeed use anyone in order to change the world. So how did Good News Ministries start? So from, from that, Good News Ministry started in Mchinji in the year 2016. It was a point of need ministry. We could go to a person and say, what is your problem? And what do you want the Lord Jesus Christ to do for you? Mm -hmm. Someone would say, I'm sick. And we'd say, let's hold hands and pray. Then I was doing that as a way of trying to uh, minister the morning water that I, was, I received from Nigeria. But little did I know that people would now begin to demand my availability and my service. Then I was working, and that happens in the course of 2016 up to 2017. Yeah. Around 2017, I now began to see the demand growing and the hunger to preach the gospel growing each and every day. And that's how I began to do it. And by the grace of God... You so you didn't go to a theological college? I didn't go to any theological college. As I told you, yeah. I was born and raised a Catholic. And I'd always wanted to be a Catholic priest, but I didn't have that opportunity yeah. to go into the seminary. So I went through the university and I didn't go to any theology. So you, you are now one of the powerful pastors that we have in this country, Praise but God. yet you didn't go to a theological college. Can, can, you, can you just explain to our viewers th yeah. th th that, that kind of connection? Yes, I didn't go indeed to any theological college. I have not gone to any Bible school, but just like in the case of Paul, when he was going about to persecute the Christians, he had an encounter with the Holy Spirit and he turned around and began to preach the gospel. And he became the greatest apostle of the Lord and yet he had never gone in the teachings of Christ Jesus. So I have realized that uh, we can go to a Bible school which is very good because the Bible school theology introduces us to the word of God. Yeah. But then it does not give us the spirit of God. But when you go into the college of the Holy Spirit, which is by his own ordinance, that spirit of God can even then lead you to the word of God so that you can understand it for your own salvation, but also for the salvation of those that you're preaching to. So I thank the Lord that 
uh, he, he was able to give me a gift yeah. to become his servant, though I didn't go to any uh, theology or Bible college. So, so good news, ministries. What is your core doctrine? Because you need yeah. to have a doctrine that you stand upon. Yes. Yeah. So as Good News Ministries, we believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah. That he came, he died for us on the cross of Calvary, and he rose again so that whosoever believes in him should have life and life eternally. We also believe that the kingdom of God is real and that whosoever believes in the Lord Jesus Christ will have the way to the kingdom of the Lord. After this life, there is an afterlife which... Uh, each and every believer will need to enjoy in the bosom of the Lord Jesus Christ. But also, most importantly, we believe that the Lord Jesus Christ said, let my kingdom come. So we believe in the demonstration of the kingdom of the Lord here on earth while we're still alive, as we're waiting for the time of glory to go into the second heaven. You believe in the baptism? I believe in the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Okay. I be believe in the baptism of water. And I believe in the Holy Trinity, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. So what kind of baptism? A sprinkling or amazing someone? For, for, for me, what is most important then is, because water is just a symbolism, yeah. the most important thing is whether that baptism has led you to go into a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. But in our case, we yeah. do the mention one, okay. but I don't really have a, a, an, an issue for those that do the sprinkling because water is just a symbol, but the most important thing is allowing the Holy Spirit to lead you closer to the Lord Jesus Christ. Ndi mafuna fusoiri, mundi yanke nchijewa, kuti ena aswa mene sangate kuti tzadira nchingereze aziti zenda na ulimozi. So, mugani za kuti chimenecha vangitza kuti mpingu wanu ukurecho, nchifandu kumva kuti it's probably one of the largest kulirongu eko. Ku 47. Thousands and thousands are meeting every Sunday. Thank God. Chisisi janu ni janu. Chomwe na ndazi nikira kwa mbili nchoni na kuti mulungu ndoko nzika kusinta miyo ya antu. Kumanso antu ali ndi mavuto siyana siyana. Amina yeah. ufumika mulungu. Nde ifeo utumiku watu chumene ukula kwa mbili. Nchoni na kuti tima tofiki la zosua zao za antu. Okay. Tima muza mtu kuti ufuna jani chumene mulungu wanga kuchitire. Ngata ufuna majiritu. Tima vempira mzina na Yesu Kristu mtu uja majira. Ndiye umbono wa antuja, ndi umene umakatenga so ena kutabwele kwa mulungu. Kote kuti kumpingo kwa tu, kuti matakula ndila antuso ena mipingo wa ina, amina indicho soa, chimina kuona kuti mulungu wata kwa figira. So, maumbono ya tu, nda amina maralikila wa mbili kusiana ndi ulalikuwa paka mabatu. Chifuwa, tika mula alikila mtuja, kumpata jo soa jake kuzira mzina Yesu Kristu. Ama kala jo dengila jake kutenga watu, kwa antu ena so amine and it just so a jungle jomejo, Cabinet of Fan and Nav. Let him on and Aguera. Sin a pit over TV, Cabanga my advert, Sin a pit over radio, Cabanga my advert, Tilibe Bill Bodio, Save Church Quatu, Bill Bodia Kuru, New Bonomini and Tamakar now, Agaman Dambuyes. So the Pingo O Casgiga registered in the Malamoro Amalawi, Kamenandi yeah. Kabina, Fellowship. No, it's a registered church, Nimpingo Kazigiga, Tina yeah. Lembeta, the Minister of Justice, and, and we have a constitution. Okay. In this certificate, you have always done the uh, Bomala Malawi, and we do all things that a, a, a proper church is supposed to do. Why 47? So, as I said, we started the ministry in Chinji. Yeah. Then I was working in the long way. Um, it was very difficult for me to balance between work and church. So I chose not to bring a conflict and I started the ministry in Chinji. And when the, we, we observed that there were a, an influx of people coming from Blanta, Lilongwe, and surrounding districts following us to Nchinji. And people were following you to Nchinji? In Nchinji, yes. Okay. That was around 2016, 2017. And then, the demand of, of people, we said, why don't we have also an outlet in Lilongwe, where I was actually staying. So that is what led us to also have a branch in Lilongwe, which is now our headquarters. Mm -hmm. And uh, 47, it is by divine arrangement. We started in area, area in Kawale, somewhere there. Yeah. And then we went into uh, area 25, and from area 25, we, we were graced that we found a place in area 47, 
where we are now. Uh, but we, 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 are, we are trying to build our headquarters in an area called Airwing in the long run as well. So you're moving from 47? By God's grace, if we, we, we manage to build it in time, we shall move. Have you already found land in we have, area? We have found land by the grace of the Lord and with the partnership of many believers. We have found mm -hmm. about five, uh, five hectares of land where we want to put the whole of our vision there. So what kind of vision do you have for, 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 for AOE? We, we, we want a church which can accommodate multinationals. People from all across the world should start coming to Malawi to worship the Lord Jesus Christ. Just like we would go to other countries to, to, to worship the Lord Jesus Christ. We want people to come and and, and see what God has done in Malawi. We, we, we are putting up a hot, we want to put up a hotel at the premise. We want to put uh, a church auditorium. We, we also have a vision of one day, if God graces us, we can have a TV, a radio station, and all that we want to be in that five hectares of land by the grace of the Lord. And, and, and in one service, mm -hmm. how many people are congregating? For the we, we usually congregate between 5,000 to 7,000 people. In one service? In, in one service. When we're having you, you, a, have, you have infrastructure to accommodate such kind of volume of people. And, and this is one of the reasons why we want to move from Area 47 to go to Airwing because the place is not very big to accommodate the growing numbers that are coming 5,000, 7,000 in one service? Yes. So we, we have our main auditorium, but yeah. some people sit outside the auditorium like overflows. So that's what is also driving Where are us. you getting all these people? Where, where, are, where are these people coming from? These are 5,000, it's quite a, a huge number we were for, in, for one service. We were in Mzuzu, we had like 20,000 people during our crusade. So these are God's people and they are yearning for God's word. And remember what the Lord Jesus Christ said, if you love me, uh, if you love the Lord, you follow my words, I shall love you and the Lord and I shall dwell in you. And when the Lord dwells in us, we become shepherds of his people. And this is what is attracting people to come to the Lord. They're not coming to us, but they're coming to the Lord through the giftings of the Holy Spirit. Let's go back to Chichewa. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, and I would want us to spend more time uh, in Chichewa if it's possible. Mpingo, Ngwati B. Joshua, Nkula Gokurelo. I, Mpingo, Suwa Prophet T. B. Joshua. Komati Taunena Kuti, Nimpingo, Mene Kutu, Ezeke De Roli, Chifuwa Jaj, Kuzoza, Ndi, Chiso Moji, Mene Chinari Pa. Muna Gaba La Moto, Kwa T. B. Joshua. Tina Gaba La Moto, Kwa Prophet T. B. Joshua. Mwa Chifuwa Jaj, Kwa Chifuwa Jaj, Chifuwa Jodi, Mene Nani Nila, Mene Nika Pita Ku Skoan, Ku Nigeria. Nari Kuti Ndi Kudwara. Andi, Nari Bema Lingari Roti, Tsikulina, Ndi Ngadza Kare Mbusa. Chifuwa Nari, Wachi Jebele, Nyamata, Odi, Nimabanga, Nchito Yanga tajoka kwa university kama mulungu ama kwanza njira zake kuti no akwanilitse chifunyo chake pa moyo watu nitajoka kumene koko ndi pamene mulungana ndi pasanjara yoti ndi take yamba utumikira uh, anthu a mulungu koma cha chikulu mene nane na mjizungu mja kunena kuti ni nkazi funsa kuti kuda ambuye ine ndi kadabanda okhandi ndalama zoti mpite ku Nigeria moyo wanga kuda kala kuti yeah. koma aliposo ena ambuye amene alibe kutekera Kuda nga kwenye ndege upita u Nigeria. Kuda mbuye, mga tekundi gilita nchito, kuti ndi zito fikira na tameneo. Ndipa mene na yamba na utenga mazi, amena na nipasa Prophet Tibi Joshua, kuyamba wapi mpila antu haji. Antu wa majira, antu wa masulidwa. Kuma zimandu wawa, fuwa ni maona kuti, kuti pakati pa mazi ndine, chofu nika upa masu wa mulu mkundi jani. Ndeni na zindikila kuti, mwina antu fe, siti mazi weleka kutu kwa mulu mkundi. Napa nga jisanko, Jo sinta mwewanga kumanso kuyamba, kuyesa, kuwape mpila antu ni manja. Naona kuti antu amba ojira, antu amba masulidwa, paka na ulendo mene tunena pano. Ti, ti kumvaso kutimuma lowera ku, 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 ku Zimbabwe, yes. kulimbusa wina magadiwa? Prophet Magaya. Ma, ma, prophet, mag, prophet Magaya. Yes. Kulimbusa wina Prophet Magaya. Yes. Imene iso deiti. Nde Prophet Magaya yeah. ni mwana wa uzimu wa Prophet Tibi Joshua. Andi nagadzi wa za Prophet Magaya ntabida kwa Prophet Tibi Joshua in 2014. Pamine ni maga pekila umboni. Waza zikuru zimene mungana ni chitira. Nta... Muna, muna, muna buwelela so, muta, mutajira muna buwelela so kwa Tibi Joshua? Hei pobeza mawa maduza wanena kuti tiena kwa miga mungu. Okay. Andi mkumbu kila akate ajana achira kumi. Yeah. Kuma ana buwelela modzi. Yeah. Andi mungana utukodena na chila ajari kuti. Wachila kweni kweni ndiwe. 
then naona kuti ineyo kuti ndidziwe za ukuru wa Mulungu mwa prophet B Josh tifojo the enaga da nene na mbona nde ine so banyi litandize ena kuti akamva mbona wanga nawo so ati okhulupirira nde na berera 2014 kuma pedo okay ukane na umboni waza schools mene mungana nichitira time ene yona mungadwa la jaya ninkadwa la mimba okay and na bezeka kuti ndi mango wonda ndi kapita wachipata pali beje ni jeni chimene chimadzi ka kuti ndi vuto and sima beza thandizo ina lions chifake naona kuti i think got tawela ndi kwa mulungu komano ndachoka mene kuti nzambi zinachitika na kuyesedwa kunchito moyo namba kusintha then naona kuti ndi chabwe ndi pite wonda kujanso kunatha ndi ne munthu ra banona nya ndi apeza kuti ndi abelaso ukango yamika mulungu nde ndiri kumene kuja ndi madziwa kunena kuti kuti ndizichoka kuno kupita ku Nigeria kumakhala kwa kutale and ni makani kusinka sinka kuti kodi ningalumikizike bwani ndi chisomwe chichi kena kawina ana nduza kuti koma alipo mwana amene amaphunzitsidwa ndi prophet B Joshua ali ku Zimbabwe mene ni majoko mene kunango kandi chidi kuti ndipite ndikaone kuti kodi amene aphunzitsidwa ndi prophet B Joshua chuchi tikani moyo wake ndi chani okay kena kanda pita mene kuja naona kuti palibe kusiana kweni kweni zinakhanga ndi makembo mwanambo okay zima zimaoneka kuti mulungu chisomo cha prophet B Joshua chiso paiwo kenaka nthawina mulungu ana ndi patsa vumbulutso kuti uyena kumtsatira uyu kuti akuphunzitse njira za kutumika popeza sina pita ku bible school ina leo semina okay. nena okay so ndi pamene namba kupita kuti mapanga 10 ma seminars ma classes na phunza zino zambiri and in Zimbabwe u Zimbabwe okay na phunza zino zambiri na fika pozindikira kuti moyo uno kuti munthu bambane muchina chiyo somo uchita kumafunika kuti uzichepetse pa maso pa ena amene anakwanitsa pokali kuti akuphunzitse akulondola njira ndipo akupasenzelo ndi lontha laka chidweka zinthu zako so nchifwake ndi nabe zondamba kupita kwa prophet W Magaya ku Zimbabwe ndiri chimene ndi lero chifwa cha nzelo zao chifwa so cha kupanjwe wa ndiko ndi mayamika mulungu moti kubwera ada abwera kuti amuda ipana ndino ama amagaya ama ho mwachi somo cha mulungu yeah. ina nthayo ati afike kumalayi kunoko komano kunoko ndi anambi amene oh. ama apozitsa so ngati nayo okay. komano namkomera mulungu kuti ndikale modzi mwayo amene ana walandira prophet age so we really took a center stage in welcoming the prophet in malawi in those two days of crusades tikumva kuti ku 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 chali chikwano ku 47 iko yes. anthu amadanda ulanso nkhani za phokoso yes yes akuti muli ndizi da za mphamvu ndiye makama ka sandero anthu amakani ko chita concentrate are you aware of yeah that? i'm very aware of that yeah. and you know i have come to realize that what makes you a good christian yeah is what makes you a good citizen so the concept of good christianity and good citizenship yeah are intertwined and they were one and the same thing So indeed when we came to area 47 you know it was a temporary structure and we had growing numbers of people it was very difficult for us to communicate as a congregation imagining 5000 people that are in an open space and we were forced to begin to have speakers that could actually help us to communicate and indeed we started having pockets of complaints from the community which i understood and right now we we built the sanctuary it is covered and people go inside and outside we put tents that are covered to make sure that people are able to get uh, comfort around because we don't want to be a nuisance mm. to our community mm. whatever makes us good citizens is what makes us good christian remember it is our obedience to god's word yeah that makes us good good christians and it is our obedience to the laws of our land that makes us good citizens so you can see we cannot say we obey god while we don't want to obey the laws of those people those people god has put in place is the Lilongwe city council mm. aware of the numbers that you are talking about They're because very... because we are now looking at basic amenities yes. toilets and yes. uh, and and etc yes actually they are aware about it uh, we, 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 we we even during our crusade if yeah. you observe if you saw the pictures the mayor was there the deputy mayor was there okay. the member of parliament for the area was there uh, and and many people um, of authority were there and we have a very good relationship with the city council they are our fathers they are our city fathers they advise us and they guide us through the way 
We'll take a short break. Okay. We'll be back with you in a moment. If you guys are just joining us, I'm joined by Prophet uh, Patson Gondwe. Uh, he's uh, managing and founder of uh, Good News uh, Ministries Church uh, in Malawi. We'll be back uh, in a moment. The program tonight is coming to you, KTC of Rainbow Pains. They say blood is thicker than water. Reality tells us that even family lets one down sometimes. We still have to face the harsh weather as individuals. We say Rainbow Weather Shield paint is thicker than blood. The paint endures the hottest of days, the heaviest of rains, the dustiest of seasons, and the windiest of nights. Not even the toughest molds can stand this hero of a paint. Rainbow Weather Shield, family and true friend that sees no weather. Rainbow Paints, peace of mind, part of the deal. Kati mungungo tipeza kumene, mungone na program ya Times Exclusive. Ndi ndi uh, Reverend Kamena Kutu Prophet Gondwe uh, kuchokera ku Good News uh, Ministries. Awudi umpingo wanungu, kote ine sindafike ego. Mwine muza ndi rana, tuli na nza wele. Ya, yeah, yomo so. <laughs> <laughs> Awudi mwine ndi malo, yeah. kaya mungumacha sanctuary, mm -hmm. kaya njiani. Okay. Mm. I don't know where that in Chenga came from. Mm. What I have heard, and mm. I stand to be corrected. I don't know where that in Chenga came from. I don't know where that in Chenga came from. I don't know where that in Chenga Kusinda mwe wana mani, amina na indikati. Anagwi sanchido jitunzi ja Peter, kudia ajili tzodwa. Anagwi sanchido ndodo ya Mose, kudia masule ana izwa yiku nsinga za Egypt. Andi mulungu, atagwi sanchido jitunzi ja Peter, kudia ajili tzodwa. Anagwi sanchido ndodo ya Mose, ufuru, na ajili tzodwa, kumaso jipu mtzodwa. Pana agi. Nga kare mjibangu ya tzobano, timatona mulungu, agwi sanchido mahandika jifu apau. Nga kare malo vambu yesu ameni mm -hmm. kuchilita antwaji. So ifeo mwaya vumbuluto munga nadi batza mwaya kumaso jisomo chodi tindi mwala meti macha uti holy ground. Oh, holy, holy ground. Holy ground is ilingati tamanda. Okay. Mwene inali kubeth side. Okay. Kwa ifeo. Tina denga njenga ume u njenga ume ni magulita. Osuwa kwa Israelia. Si njenga uginagulita kwa Israelia. Okay. Njenga, okay. Njenga, njenga, njenga. Mulungu wa Israel ni mungu soa mala. Okay. Ndeti na gulita nchido kukubilo jato, tinape mpela, unanda mbuwe, pobeza ndu ndambi. Yeah. Tawi zina sinika kwa nitu kumampe mpela wina aliese, mwabaek. Okay. Tawi zina pamene negulibe, anto mafuna bwele, azabe mpela edwe, yeah. kwa mafuna kumaindu kuzoza kwa anu. Banja mbuwe mudalite, malo awawa, akala wa yele tzedo. Kudi mtu waka bwela, ndi kukulubilia, ajili tzidwe, ama suride, umasora ndire, zoso wazaki. Ndeti maona di, zinu zambi izu uchitika, anto wada ndi brain tumor, by faith, my brother brain tumor. At in my videos, and maybe you can show them later on. And when I was in my anaindi cancer, chilonda, chosa bola, kupola. Zinuzam bi zimajidiga. And when my sons are zinuzoda buita, ena kusanza maleza lagumene. That body is 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 my car body to be around. Ma, kusanza maleza ala? Antwa ma sanza zinuzodi uda bodi zizi zizi da alwa banyi mtutumwa. Zinuza ufiti. Ok. Zinu, zo, zo, zo da buita. Ok. Antwa ma ama masulidwa. Andi fedu gami ga mungu wambili. Fwa zinadi pata jilimbiki. So di zonadi. Kudi mungu wa elaisha. Amena ana guita nchito maza yoda. Di mungu so amene ali kumalai kuna kwa kanoli. So antwa ma libida. Kudi abwele pa, pa hole ground iba. So it's a money-making machine for for the church. Sagwe na wuli bila gena gali gonsi. Mbukile wudi baibu yuma na wundi kwa ulele mna andira. Kumasu kwa ulele mna batidi. Ine ine kudi ndi jiritidwe. Ndabida kuna jere wa profeti bijosh. Yeah. Sina libile kubi dinari gonsi. Kupatula kudi nade ngandrama zanga. Kukwela yeah. transporti. 
duga beza malogona. Kwa magudi profeta ni bempelele. Malogona acharichi? Malogona kuna jelia. Ok, osati acharichi? Malogona. Ok. Kudi hotel, yeah. kudi umeno wafigile. Ok. Kwa magudi profet, kundi uza kudi ngisada kubempelele ni ubatenda hama. Ah, Haa, izmei sisi na jitike. Ndei ni obo kala mwana wa umuzimu. Sindu kuona jani zero ni nizitaupa nga zimei. Kwa maso, Bible lima nena. Kudi kwa ulele, nandi ya machisoma. So, so, so you want to tell us on a national television? Yes. Kuti muntu kuti abwere agumane nanu. Yes. Kuti abwere ku hole matu hole landi. Hole ground. Oh hole ground. Yes. Sa kwenye na kuti pirakati kwasa? No no no. That, that, that's so wrong. Because the grace is for free. The grace is for free. The moment we begin to mercantilize the grace, then we're not. Pro, um, pro, um, I mean, we're not promoting the, the the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Christ came and gave us salvation for free. And we that are pioneering his salvation, we must spread it for free. There is no way someone should make you uh, pay for prayer. If you find someone who says, before I meet you, before I pray for you, give me money, then I don't think they are a servant of God. Because God's grace and God's giftings are for free. So run away from such people. So no one pays to no, no one pays to go through the holy ground. No one pays, and they are not supposed to pay. They are not supposed to pay. No, no, you know what people don't understand. Yes, they call names and they despise. So we we cannot answer for those that say say that. But you see, whatever we do, we do it in public. We do it on camera. We do it because we are accountable to the society as well. Come and see for yourself what the Lord is doing. And there's nothing like paying to meet the prophet or paying to go through any holy place in our church. It's a church. So a church is free to everyone. So where, where are you getting money to, to, to run the ministry? You, you see, we, we have got uh, a lot of partners that come. You know, when I pray for someone and they are blessed, they, 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 they think back to say, okay, for me to be blessed, for me to be healed, is because prophet prayed for me. Let me go back to church and sponsor the gospel even more. So people come with their tithe, people come with their offering, people come with their what we call a partnership program. These are people that really want the gospel to move forward and they come with their resources, with their money, with their wisdom, with their strength, with their time. So that's how so we So when get the people resources. get healed, yes, or when God answers their prayers yes. through you, mm -hmm. They are encouraged to come back and say thank you. Actually, when people have been healed yeah. or blessed, yes. we don't follow them up. We don't follow them up. Or you don't follow them we up? We don't follow them up. It's okay. not our responsibility to follow them up. You see? But some people come back to testify. What we encourage them to do is go into the world and share the good news that the Lord has done for you. But some people actually come back to say, Man of God, I was healed. I was blessed. You are going for a crusade. I want to sponsor the crusade. You are going for uh, an, an, an orphanage giving. I want to contribute towards the orphanage giving. You are, you are constructing a church. I want to contribute towards the construction of the church. So that's how we are surviving. That's how we are surviving. We don't have donors. We just have well-wishers that are concerned about my call in life and those that love what God is doing in my life. We, we have also heard other prophets mm -hmm. faking mm -hmm. miracles mm -hmm. kwa tenga nyamata kwa punzitsa ena kwa batsa ma zoyendera mm -hmm. kuti mukabwera kunsonkha kwathu muka mm -hmm. mudzanene kuti mwachira mm -hmm. ena kuna mizira kuti ngosaona mm -hmm. zikuchitika zimenezi mm -hmm. in the body of christ mm -hmm. Are you aware? You see, uh, of, I mean, of these things happening, a lot of things are happening in the world right now. Okay, and you see, for everything that is counterfeit, there is a corresponding original thing, and all we need to do is to seek the grace of the Lord and the discernment of the Spirit, because the Bible says, "Test the Spirit before you follow any man of God." So you, as a Christian, you have got an obligation to ask the Lord about the true, genuine identity of the man that you are following. Otherwise, there are a lot of counterfeit things, not only in the Christian dome, but in many other areas of life. But you see, there are men of God and there are preachers of God. These are two different groups. Let's say that again. There are men of God yes. and there are preachers of God. Okay. These are two distinct groups. Okay. Preachers of God are those that 
preach what they have read from the Bible. Whilst men of God are those that preach what they have lived from the Bible that they have, they have read. So this is why the Bible says you shall know them by their fruits. So it is up to you as a Christian to seek discernment from the Lord. It is a gift that everyone has. Everyone has a natural instinct. Test the spirit and you shall see whether this is true or not. But I will speak for myself. Yeah. Uh, you see, there are certain things that you cannot fake. You cannot fake that someone should have a cancerous wound that okay. should, should be healed after three weeks or after a month. Okay. You see, you cannot fake that someone has a brain tumor certified by, by, by radiologists, certified by, 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 by medical doctors. You can't fake such things. You cannot fake someone vomiting blood, for instance. Yeah. You, you cannot fake those things. So for us, we don't accept a testimony without medical proof. Okay. So if you come to church and say, man of God, I've got cancer in my leg or I've got cancer in my blood, yeah. we tell you, bring the medical document that certifies you as someone who has got cancer before we pray for you. Because we don't want to move a mountain that is not there. Because the Bible says you shall speak to this mountain, move and shall move. So we want to understand what is it that you're suffering from. If someone has, says, I've got a fibroid, we say, bring medical reports. You know? so when they, they bring the medical reports, we then pray for them. And after we have prayed for them, we don't allow them to testify unless they go back to the doctor who gave them the first medical report. Okay. And then they come with the before and the after. To say, man of God, I came here. I had a fibroid in my, in my tummy. This is my medical report. And I, you prayed for me. I went back to the same doctor. And this is my after medical report. And that now qualifies as a testimony. Otherwise, if we are putting up stories, if we are doing games, we are only bringing shame upon the name of God. But the name of God is all powerful. There's nothing you cannot do. Why should we play games if the real uh, power is there? So you don't testify in our church without the certification of medical doctors. But you are aware of fake miracles. As I said, yes. there, 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 there are counterfeits everywhere. Okay. There are fake things everywhere. Even people that want to maybe to impress yeah. so that maybe people can believe that you know, the healing is taking place, they can yeah. fake. But you see, one thing that I've known is that everything that comes from God is consistent because God and consistency are one. The I Bible see. says it's the same yesterday, yeah. it's the same today, and it's the same tomorrow. You may lie for a moment, but time will catch up with you. You may pretend for a season, yeah. but time will judge you. So we don't have any, 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 any reason whatsoever to, to lie because we know time is the greatest judge. So if people are, are fake, let time judge. What, what about allowing people to showcase mm -hmm. their sickness? Mm -hmm. I've seen banners. Yes, placards, yeah. And, the, you know, is that, is that, is that biblical? I, I thought a human being is supposed to be dignified. It's very biblical. Actually, the dig dignification of a human being yeah. is when their problem is taken away. You see, blind Bartimaeus cried out in public, Son of David, have mercy on me. I can't see. That was a public proclamation of his situation because he had believed that God, Jesus Christ, is able to take it away. The woman with the issue of blood. Yeah. Was, was paraded in public. And she said, I was the one who reached out to your garment. I had an issue of blood. You see, Naaman, a, a general, was actually led to the Jordan River, a public space, in order to be healed. Healing is healing. Okay. But the best healing is the one that happens in public because it glorifies the Lord. If I come to you and pray for you in your house or in your room, it will be you and perhaps your children and your wife that will glorify the Lord. But if the same healing happens in church, in public, under the watch of everyone, many people are going to believe. Like I believed to go to Prophet T.B. Joshua yeah. because people came in public. And some of them had the exact situation that I had. You see. But also, if you see people carrying their placard yeah. and coming in public to say, this is my problem then you must know they are convinced that there is a solution. Because no one can forsake their dignity in desperation 
if there is no promise of solution. You can pray for them without them holding their placards? I do pray for everyone, even those that are not holding placards. But you see, those that are holding placards yeah. are those that have accepted to say we want to help Jesus Christ to be proclaimed through our testimony. So there is no way we can pray for them secretly if their aim is to make sure that God uses their problem as a point of glorification. So all the stories that we see in the Bible, we know about them today because their healings happened in public. I see. So that is the whole purpose. But we allow people, if they don't want to come with a placard, we pray for them. In secret, so we pray for them. But those that are coming with a placard mm -hmm. are those that have understood the power of a testimony. Let's quickly talk about uh, our country, yeah. Malawi. Yeah. Malawi is facing so many challenges. Okay. We have the for forex problem, mm -hmm. we have the economy uh, problem, and we sometimes have leadership mm -hmm. problems. Mm -hmm. Can this country be fixed? Yes, absolutely, absolutely, yes, 100%, 100%. 100%. You see, as Christians, yeah. the Lord Jesus Christ said, you are in the world, but you are not of the world. Okay? You are in the world, but you are not of the world. It means our understanding of problems is different from the world's understanding of problems. When the world looks at problems, they look at shame. They look at destruction. They look at downfall. Yeah. But when a Christian looks at problems, they look at an opportunity for a greater level and another step in faith. So when I'm looking at my country, I don't look at a country that is falling down, but I look at a country that God wants to lift up by faith. So I choose to look at my problems, my community's problems and my country's problems from the perspective of God. And this is what motivates us to pray, to say, Lord, do not allow these problems to destroy us, but allow these problems to prepare us for the testimony that you have prepared for us ahead. So that is my conviction about the problems that we are passing through. As a country. We are also facing the cancer of corruption. Yes. In all stages. Yes. And sometimes the church is accused of being a beneficiary yes. of stolen money. Yes. Yes. And sometimes they fund the church activities. True. True. Do you think the church has a responsibility to fight corruption? You see. When the, it's sometimes a beneficiary of corruption. The church is supposed to be ideally the fabric of the morality of the society. Yeah. Even in issues of integrity, honesty, and even against fraudulent activities. But when you begin to see people that are in church participating in corrupt activities, then there's something wrong with the church. And I, I'm not surprised about, about that. Okay. Because you know what? A church is not a congregation of saints. A church is a congregation, a gathering, of sinners that are seeking redemption. So it would be very unfair for us to put all churches in one box. Let us try to analyze case by case what is happening. As I said, there are people that are preachers of God yeah. and there are people that are men of God. Those that are men of God value their relationship with God more than the service they do for God. They value their relationship more than what they have to offer to God. So if I am going with a fraudulent money to church, without having any remorse whatsoever about how that will impact on my relationship with God, then my Christianity is questionable. Because our Christian work with the Lord involves two major things. The work we do for Him, in terms of anything you can think of, and the relationship we maintain with Him. And the most important thing is the relationship we maintain with Christ. And out of the abundance of that relationship, out of the depth of that relationship we have with Christ, we can then serve Him. We can save him through our offerings. We can save him through our money. So before you go and give out your offering, you must ask yourself, is this offering and money... What, what about the church asking mm -hmm. whether this money is legit? Yes. It's, because it's, the church hasn't been asking. It's also the responsibility of the church. Yeah, but for a long time, the church has not been asking, you're bringing us this money. Where mm. have you gotten this money? That's why I'm saying yes. the church has got a responsibility to bring about integrity in its people. Because at the end of the day, the church composes of the same people that are participating in corruption. Yeah. You understand? Yes. So the church on one end has got a responsibility to educate its, its masses, to educate its Christians about the value of maintaining a sound relationship with the Lord, which would then result in them staying away from corruption. 
But if the church is not able to teach about integrity, then it becomes a very bad situation for them now to go out there and begin to advocate. We need to be standing on a moral ground to advocate for or against corruption. We need to have a moral Christian ground. And that comes from sound teachings, teachings of righteousness, teachings of purity, and teachings of integrity. There are people watching us yes. uh, that are involved in corruption. Mm -hmm. What would you tell them? I, I, I pity them. I pity the relationship with the Lord. Because after all is done in this world, everyone is going to stand in the presence of the Lord and face judgment. So if we are not uh, concerned about our relationship with the Lord and we, are, we allow fraudulent activities to destroy that which Christ died for, our relationship with him, then our future is doomed. And the problem is we may be laying a curse not only on ourselves, but even on our children yet born. Because the, the, the wrongs people do in secret are publicly punishable. And the good deeds people do in secret are publicly rewarded. So no matter how long it may take, if you are doing something wrong in secret, it will catch up with you and the punishment will be a public punishment. The Pentecostal churches, including the, the prophetic ones, yes. have quite often been accused mm -hmm. that uh, you live uh, in a very flamboyant mm -hmm. uh, life. Mm -hmm. compared to Protestant because they build churches, hospitals, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, schools. Mm -hmm. What are you doing mm -hmm. to help our generation? Yeah, so... I'm now talking about you. My, myself, yes. yeah. You see... And your church. Yes, and, and my church. Yeah. You see, uh, maybe just to give a background, to say when God wants to change a generation, yeah. he usually sends a person with a blessing to bless that generation. So you, you look at Abraham, he was a blessing to his generation. You look at David, you look at all the men of God in the Bible. So in any generation, God will raise someone in whom he will put value and blessings that is meant for that generation. But for the generation to benefit from the blessing that we are carrying as Christians, we need to be accepted by the generation we want to impact. So for instance, if I come to you and I want to heal you, yeah but you have closed up your heart against me, you have not accommodated me, you have not accepted me, perhaps because of my lifestyle. It means I cannot impact you. I cannot heal you. It means I'm denying you of the blessing of the Lord through me by my way of life. So it is really uh, a great concern uh, that uh, prophetic or protestant churches live flamboyant lives, but not only issues of flamboyance. If even our public standing, even our characters have got a lot to do with how much we are going to impact the people. So for me, I'm always very careful to say, if I'm going to meet Mr. Banda, is he going to accept me as a servant? I'm the sort of the word. Is he going to allow me to impact him? Yeah, but the, I'm, I'm talking of a situation where mm. a prophet mm -hmm. is living Mm. lavishly, mm. expensive cars, mm. staying in expensive uh, places mm. and location, yes. while the church is suffering. Mm -hmm. Because some, they come empty, you know, mm. stomach. Yeah. I mean, it's... It, it, but when you see the prophet, mm -hmm. the car that he's driving, mm -hmm. the house that he's living in, mm -hmm. cashing in mm -hmm. on poor people. Yeah, that, 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 is that fair? That's why I was saying, yes. we have got a responsibility to impact our generation. If people come poor, they must be blessed. They, they must be blessed how? Let's teach them the ways of, 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 of making a living. Let us teach them not only saying um, you have to give your life to Christ, but after you've given your life to Christ, what would be your lifestyle uh, mannerism that are going to help you? Because remember, we, we are a hybrid of the soul, the spirit, and yeah. the body. When we are saved, it means our soul has been rescued. Yeah, but what are you doing? Are you feeding the poor? We are feeding are the poor. Are you building if, schools? If you saw, yes. if you saw, we have not built schools okay. because maybe we don't have that ability right now. Yeah. But if you see, we there are, there are students that are pay school fees for. There I are, see. If you saw during the Sacron uh, uh, time, we, we went to Mulanje, we went to Cholo, went to Blanta to give, just because we want to help out our community. But then, coming back to your question to yeah. say our public standing, the issue is 
if you reject me because of my lifestyle, it means you are also rejecting the value that I carry towards you. So as a prophet, I need to be very careful regarding my lifestyle. Okay. Because otherwise, I'll be judged in a wrong way. Yeah. That will end up people closing up their heart and being denied the value that I'm carrying. Yeah. For instance, if I go to a hotel in the, camp, in the lonely company of my wife yeah. without my children around, how will people look at me? Yeah. Those that don't know my wife might think maybe that's a girlfriend. Yeah. And they will begin to look at me as someone who is not morally right in terms of my marital yeah. affairs. Yeah. And I will, I will, they may not come to me for healing. Yeah. So what do I do in my personal life? I don't go to places in the lonely company of my wife. I have to go with my children okay. or some people in, a, in my company. Yeah. Why? Because I'm very sensitive of the public eye. Because yeah. if, if the people look at me negatively, yeah. they are also going to deny me and thereby denying my quality. We don't have much time. Are you optimistic mm -hmm. about this country? Yes, very optimistic. Uh, we were in Mzuzu. We gathered around 20,000 people. We were praying for our country because we believe that the solution of our country are with the Lord. And we can never give up on a country. Everything else shall pass away. But the promise of God for this country shall remain the same. I want you to look at that camera. There might be some people watching us tonight. They have so many challenges. Yes. Others, they are probably going to bed yes. on an empty stomach. Yes. Financial challenges. What would you tell them? Yes, so brethren, wherever you are, I greet you in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ. And I'm just here to encourage you in faith. You see, when God wants to change your life, he puts you through a season of circumstances which you may not understand right now. But later on, when the testimony comes upon your life, you begin to know why God had allowed those, those times. God looked at Joseph, a slave boy, and saw in him a prime minister. God looked at David, a shepherd boy, and saw in him a king. God looked at Paul, a murderer, and saw in him a greatest apostle of the Lord. God looked at Moses, an angry, rudent murderer, uh, son of, of Israel, and saw in him a deliverer of his people. It might be very quick, it might be too quick for you to give up on the Lord. You might be passing through your situation, you might be passing through your sickness, but you can still remain a friend of God. A man can be sick in body and yet a, f a candidate of heaven. A man can be poor in finances and yet a friend of God. Do not base your faith on your improvement after prayer. Do not base your relationship with the Lord on what you have now. In all things, honor the Lord, praise him, and I know very soon you shall receive your testimony in the name of Jesus Christ. How accessible are you as a prophet? Because they... There are sometimes concerns okay. that prophets are very difficult to access them. So for us, yeah. to make it easy because of the numbers, yeah. on every Sunday I do counseling and, uh, and prayer line sessions where I interact with the people that want to be prayed for. And After then, they have paid something? No, they don't pay anything as okay. I say. Okay. So on Saturday we interact. Everyone from anywhere can come. You meet the prophet, we talk to you. We cancel you, answer your problem. Then on Sunday, we congregate together, we pray. And if you really have something outstanding that you want to meet me still, yeah. on Sunday, I always remain behind to meet people. And that I do every day. Because that is what I was born for, that's what I live for, and that's what I, I, I will die for. Can you confirm of people coming outside the country to pray with you? Yeah, we, we, we have people from Zambia. Yeah. We, have, we are having a lot of Zambians. We are having people from South Africa. Just this weekend, we had people from Uganda that come just to come and worship the Lord with us. So you're contributing we, something to the economy? We, 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 we believe so. We believe so. We believe so. We believe so. Why should we, tomorrow, mm. it's Sunday, yes. why should people make a decision to come and congregate with you? If you saw the videos in... Mzuzu. Yes. People are telling us they have never had a congregation of people being healed, being delivered like it happened in Mzuzu. God is raising us for a new level, a new season. And on, tomorrow on Sunday, yeah. we are celebrating the grace of the Lord that he has shown us in this half of the year. And it will be a big Sunday. 
Uh, if you are sick, expect to be healed. If you are afflicted, expect to be delivered. That I'm assuring you. Whether you choose it or not, the Lord is ready to change your life. Uh, Prophet Gondwe, are you married? Kids? Yes, I'm, I'm married to a lady called Tamara Kalua, and we have got two sons by the grace of the Lord. And how, what do you do in your free yeah, time? Uh, uh, in my free time, yeah. I, I like playing football with my sons. Okay. And uh, I love reading leadership books. Okay. I, I love what, what are you reading, reading this week? Uh, 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 this week I've been reading a book by Prophet Magai. It oh. is called The Benoist Bino, 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 Mind. The Benoist Mind. Benoist A billionaire. Oh, billionaire's mind. mind. Yeah, mindset, okay. Yeah. okay. Sure. After all is said, I wanted to give you an opportunity to say your final remarks. Okay. Uh, it might be a prayer or anything that you want. Okay. Uh, what would be your parting shot yeah. tonight? Yeah, I, I, as, I, as I said, I just want to encourage everyone that is watching me right now. God loves you. There's no one apart from God that loves you. Don't allow the devil to deceive you that you, don't, you are not loved by God because of your situation. Christ Jesus never promised that we were going to live a life without trouble, but he promised victory in our troubles. And you are a candidate of that victory in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Don't wait until heaven for you to be healed. Don't wait until heaven for you to be blessed. Don't wait until heaven for you to be delivered. Because in heaven, there, there, are, there, there are no blessings. You are only blessed in the presence of poverty. In heaven, there is no deliverance. You are only delivered where there are demons. In heaven, there is nothing like being healed because you can only be healed where you are sick. We get sick here, we get poor here, we, got, we get attacked here, and you must be healed here and now. And it is my prayer that the Lord must touch you, God must de deliver you and bless you for the salvation of your soul, but also for the benefit of mankind. May the Lord bless you. I remain your brother, Prophet Pigon. In Lilongwe, yes. three big churches. Yes. Esa Ubanda on yes. the other side. Yes. Prophet Shepherd Bushiri on yes. the other side. Yes. And you, Prophet Gondwe. Yes. Quite and a huge. Also, Bishop Simama the other side. Yeah, and Bishop Simama the other side. Yes. Quite a huge competition. How are you managing? It's not a competition at all. You see, some of these people have come before us and they have shaped the, the way of the gospel for us. I've seen, I've been following Bishop Simama for a long time. He's been there, he's been preaching. And we have seen Prophet Shepard Bushiri, we have seen um, Pastor Esa Banda. The Bible says we are one body with many parts. I might be the leg and they might be my eyes. So where I am weak, they are my strength. Where they are weak, I might be their strength. So there's no competition at all. We are working as a holistic unit. Prophet Patson Gondwe, quite interesting, I must say, hearing you talk tonight. We wish we had more time. Thank you very much for thank, joining us thank tonight. You. God bless you so much. Thank you very much indeed. Well, on that note, we conclude this week's edition of Times Exclusive. I, would jo I was joined by Prophet Gondwe uh, from Good News Ministries Church. My name is Brian Banda, and from all of us here at Golden Peacock Hotel in Blantyre, thanking you for joining us, and goodbye.